In this video, we are going to look at internal loads or internal forces that are set up or developed within a beam or a frame. When a beam or a frame is subjected to transverse loadings, three possible internal forces are developed. One is a normal or actual force, N, which acts perpendicular to the section. Another one is a shearing force that is always symbolized as V, and this acts tangentially to the cross section. Then we have the bending moment that is symbolized as M, and this always tries to bend the beam. Now these forces, the three internal forces, the shearing force, the normal force, and the bending moments, can be shown with a simple loading of a cantilever beam by section XX in the figure below. For us in this video, we are going to illustrate this using a simple loading of a cantilever beam. And we will have it sectioned on a region, and we shall call that section XX. Now, if this is a cantilever beam that is fixed one end, then the other end is given a force F. So if we section it at this region, then we will be able to have this beam cut into two pieces, which two pieces will have the several internal loadings that we are going to look at. Now, here we have the cantilever beam when you load it at the end, Remember, it is fixed here and uh, always experience a reaction that is vertical here. So we will have a vertical reaction. In the same way, as you try to bend the beam down here using this force, there is also another reaction moment that is developed at this point to counterbalance the effects of this force. So this one is always present in a cantilever beam. So at the fixed support of a cantilever beam, you have one horizontal force, another vertical force AY, and a reaction moment that it acts in a way to counterbalance the load that is at the end. Now, when we create a section here, it means we are going to create shearing forces. Now, when I create a shear force here, and I create another shear force here on the left, on the right, when I add the two, I should have zero. Whatever, whatever the case it is, the magnitude here on the left of the section is always equal to the magnitude just after this section. So now, those are vertical forces uh, and th those are called shear forces. Now you have a load or internal force called a normal force that acts perpendicular to the section and we are calling it N. Now, due to this force, from the support of the cantilever beam, you know every action has an equal but opposite reaction. So this N is going to be a reaction due to AX. And therefore, the moment that is uh, developed to counterbalance the shearing force is going to act in an anticlockwise direction. Now, when we go to the other side, you see, the shear force is moving upwards and uh, therefore since we are supposed to we, we, when we add here these forces for example the horizontal force should equal to zero then it means in here this uh, normal force is going to act towards this face and uh, since the shear force is moving upwards and uh, this uh, normal f this moment was facing this way then this one must move in a clockwise direction. We, we have to always take care of the signs and the directions. If the moment was facing this way and the shear force was facing upwards, then this side it will face down with the moment also facing in an anti-clockwise direction. That is, if this side it was in a clockwise direction. So this is segment one, segment two, and in the analysis, you're supposed to determine the internal loads and that will be the normal force, the shear force V and the moment or the bending moment M. Now, to predict the behavior of structures, the magnitudes of these forces must be known as we have already said and we learn how to determine the magnitude of normal shearing force bending moment, uh, we, will we will run how to determine the magnitude of the normal shearing force 
and bending moment at any section of a beam or a frame. Now, we will also have to look at how to present the computed values of the normal force, the bending moment and the shear uh, force in a graphical form which is referred to as the shearing force and the bending moment diagrams. So in that regard, we only have the shearing force and the bending moment diagrams. Then the bending moment and shearing force diagrams, of course, they are very important because they aid immeasurably during design as they show the maximum bending moments and shearing forces needed for sizing structural members because you are designing for the maximum uh, so that at failure when that particular maximum load or bending moment comes in the member that you're designing should be able to accommodate it without failing now in the process of designing such structural members and you are required to determine the shear force or the bending moments and therefore be able to, to draw maybe the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram a particular sign conversion is necessary so that we agree on what is negative or positive on either side of a section or cut made on the beam during analysis now let us look at the sign conversion for a shear force if we have a section that has been made you always have a shear force on either side. So if it is moving upwards on the left-hand side and moving downwards on the right-hand side, so that it tends to twist this particular member, then we shall call it a positive shear force. What about if you have a section and on its left the shear force is moving downwards, whereas on the right the shear force is moving upwards? That is going to be a negative shear force. Here, the two shear forces will tend to twist the member in an anticlockwise direction. Furthermore, we need to also determine the sign conversion for normal force. A positive normal force happens when the two forces on either sections are acting away from the member. Therefore, that is when they are in tension and that is going to be a positive normal force and when they are acting towards the member they are all moving towards the section then we will have a compressive force and uh, this is going to be a negative normal force what about if we asked to get uh, the sign conversion for a bending moment we see that uh, the positive bending moment will always cause sagging of the beam and if it causes sagging of the beam, it means if I have a section, for example, XX, and uh, I have a moment that is acting in a, a clockwise direction on the left of the section and acting in a clockwise direction on the right hand side of the section, then that is going to cause a positive bending moment and this will result into sagging of the beam. Then, what if I have the bending moments on the either sec on the either sides of the section on the left hand side the beam the bending moment acting in a, an ant in a, a crop in an anticlockwise direction and on the other right hand side of the section when the bending moment acts in an anticlockwise direction to result into hogging of the beam then that is going to be a negative bending moment in the following analysis, we will see that when a section is chosen, the bending moment, normal load, and shear force are the same, whichever side you take, as long as the sign conversion is maintained. Yes, so we are going to pass through that simple analysis, and we see if the shear force or the bending moments are the same, if I chose the right-hand side or if I chose the left-hand side. Now, if we consider this cantilever beam uh, with uh, the forces that are acting on the support, we have the horizontal force AX, those are the external forces, and the vertical force AY, then also the reaction moment is also external because it acts 
to counterbalance the moment that is as a result of this force that is applied at the end. If this force is applied at the distance L uh, from the fixed support, applying equilibrium conditions, let us look at the external forces. Sum of uh, forces in the x direction is equal to zero. And since the only x force or the force in the x direction is ax, then ax is equal to zero. What about if we sum vertical uh, forces, taking the upward forces being positive, so the sum of all vertical forces is equal to zero, and that means we have Ay and have F. So what happens? Ay is positive, F is minus, according to the sign convention taken, then Ay is equal to F. What about if we also take moments? We need to know the moments about this point. If I take clockwise moments to be positive, the sum of all moments about that point must equal to zero. So F has a moment, a clockwise moment about to this point, and uh, its uh, moment will be F times L. Then it is going to be positive because it is in a clockwise direction. Then the reaction moment is in a, a negative direction or anticlockwise, so I will say subtract. So minus MR, which is equal to zero. MR, therefore, is going to equal to FR. So in summary, AX is equal to zero, AY is equal to F, MR, which is the reaction moment, is also equal to FR. We have determined the external forces. Now we have to look at the internal loads, and the, since we are to get these loads, we must take a section or a cut along. We, we must create a section transversally on this section of the beam. Now, if I create a, a section or a cut xx, it will end at a distance x and the, the other remaining portion to force f will be at a distance l minus x. Because from here to here is l, from here to here is x, therefore from here to here is l minus x. Let us move. Now, looking at the, the two segments, we have already seen the reaction moment or the moment the, the reaction moment then we have the ay and the ax so these forces are acting at the support then at the end where we have put the, where we have put the section we have counterclockwise moments we have the shear force moving down and we have a normal force n that is compressive to the support. Likewise, on the other side, on segment two, we have uh, a moment, the bending moment, which is in the opposite direction to this one, the normal so in the opposite direction, and the shear force in the opposite direction to this, and we maintain the direction of F. Now, let us take segment one. If we take segment one, we need to look at the equilibrium conditions, so sum of uh, Horizontal forces taking uh, the positive x direction uh, to be uh, positive for all forces, then the sum of those horizontal forces is equal to zero. We know ax is positive, an is in a negative direction, therefore ax minus n is equal to zero, ax is equal to n, and is equal to zero because according to what we have already determined from the past, uh, from uh, behind, we have we have ax equal to zero and since it is equal to n then it will also equal to zero sum of vertical y or uh, the vertical uh, forces taking the upward direction forces to be positive so if we sum all of them it will, they will be equal to zero we know ay is in a positive direction and the shear force v is in a negative direction so if I subtract or get the value of V which is equal to AY, but remember AY is equal to F according to what you have already determined. Now let us also look for the moments. So if I take moments that are clockwise to be positive, the sum of all those moments is equal to zero. So we know AY is in a, will, will bring about a clockwise moment so we will have a y times x which is the perpendicular distance from this point then we also okay we are taking moments about this point so it will be a y x then minus the reaction moment mr which is acting in an clockwise direction so minus mr then minus this m 
the moment, the bending moment that we are looking for. Um, so this one is uh, negative because it is in an anti-clockwise direction. So m is equal to ayx minus fl since mr has been already determined as fl. Uh, therefore, m is equal to fx because ay is equal to f, so m is equal to fx minus fl. So if we take segment two, if we take segment two, we also have to define equilibrium conditions so sum of horizontal forces or in the x direction taking the positive x direction to be positive for these forces in the in that direction then sum of horizontal forces is equal to zero since n the normal forces the only force that is horizontal then n is equal to zero sum of vertical forces are uh, taking the upward forces to be positive is equal to zero since the forces is V and F, V is in the opposite in a positive direction, then F is in the negative direction downward, then V is equal to F. Let us take moments about this point. We realize that this bending moment is in a, an, in a clockwise direction, then F is going to be in a also a clockwise direction. Therefore, if I take those moments, I will have Remember this distance. This distance is arrow minus x. So I will say it is f first of all a clockwise moment about this point will be f times the distance from here to here. Remember for segment one it was moving from the support to the section that was distance x. Then from uh, uh, that section to the end is arrow minus x. So it will be f into arrow minus x. Then plus m, because it is also in a clockwise direction, then it is equal to zero. m, if I make m the subject of the formula, then m will therefore equal to f into x minus f, and m is equal to fx minus f. So you realize from what you have already defined, the sum of forces n is equal to zero for the first segment, v is equal to f for the first segment and for the first segment we have also seen that m is equal to fx minus fl as it is in the second segment you can see this is uh, the first segment m is equal to fx minus fl so whichever direction or i mean whichever side of uh, the section you take you, as long as you take the sine conversions into considerations, you will always have the correct internal forces, the bending moments and the shear forces. Thank you so much.